Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As always, we gather rejoicing, rejoicing that God's love has gathered us, wherever it is we may be. Alone or in families, we gather as the body of Christ, scattered but united in faith and in love. We ask the Lord to heal us of our wounds, to forgive us our sins. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather all the nations and peoples of the world into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. That night was made known beforehand to our fathers, so that they might rejoice in sure knowledge of the oaths in which they trusted. The deliverance of the righteous and the destruction of their enemies were expected by your people. For by the same means by which you punished our enemies, you called us to yourself and glorified us. For in secret the holy children of good people offered sacrifices, and with one accord agreed to the divine law, that the saints would share alike the same things, both blessings and dangers, and already they were singing the praises of the fathers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his heritage. Blessed yes, the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, 
who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Lest the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old received divine approval. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place where he was to receive an in, as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a foreign land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received what was promised, but having seen it and greeted it from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your descendants be named. He considered that God was able to raise men even from the dead, hence he did receive him back, and this was a symbol. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Watch therefore and be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that do not grow old, with the treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast, that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will put on his apron and have them sit at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes on the second watch or on the third and finds them so, blessed are those servants. 
But know this, if the householder had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have been awake and would have not left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his master will set over his household, to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly I tell you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will punish him, and will put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will, but did not make ready or act according to his will, shall receive a severe beating. But he who did not know and did what deserved a beating shall receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much is given, of him much will be required. And of him to whom men commit much, they will demand the more. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Real trust is one of the most difficult achievements for people today. Relying on somebody is always a risk, and we have been disappointed so often. But think of this. Human bonding is entirely dependent upon trust. Without trust, there can be no real relationship between people. In the modern world, we develop substitutes for trust and for human bonding. We overwork, we overeat, we live for parties and pleasures. We invent formulas such as quality time to fit family and children into our loaded schedules. And so often, we simply discard a partner who no longer pleases us we go and get another. In such a world, is there any room for trust? Any time for it? It seems that there isn't. But in the gospel, Jesus says that the master has trusted the house to the care of his servants. We hear, be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. And so there was trust in place from the master. He did not doubt his servants. He relied on their faithfulness and their fidelity, as God does ours. Yet instead of human and godly bonding, the people isolated themselves into selfish indulgences, and they use their freedom to cut people off sharply from their bond with the master. They were eating, drinking, dancing, forgetting about their, their duty or their obligation. Duties born of love. They said, the master is nowhere to be seen. He's probably staying overnight at the wedding feast. So we are free. We can do whatever we like. Do you and I do this to some degree or another with God? Let's look at a surprising example. St. Paul's story of Abraham in that second reading. 
God asks a series of risky deeds from Abraham, rewarding him each time that he fulfills it. He must travel to a land that he would somehow inherit. He must pass through great deserts and villages full of strangers. He must dwell in temporary shelters along the way. Most harsh of all, believe that his wife Sarah would at last conceive and give birth, even though they were both as good as dead in his words. And of course, it gets better. Sorry, worse, not better. God orders Abraham to make a bloody sacrifice of his only son, born to his old age. So much for trust, wouldn't you say? Run, save yourself and your children. Of all things, do not trust a God like this. That's probably what most of us would have said. But Abraham remembered. Our reading says, He thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. And even though this command was completely impossible and outrageous, Abraham at last relied completely on the steady reality of God's love. He relied on his experience of God's love and care. Many people think that God was asking for obedience at this point. But in fact, what he was asking Abraham to do was to remember and to trust the love and promise that God had shown at every step of his journey. God had given a promise that Abraham would have descendants as numerous as the sands on the seashore. Well, for better or worse, this is the way that we too are led towards bonding with God. Stay faithful, even if the entire world around you gives in to greed and disregard for others. Be there for those whom Jesus loved. Remember God's trust in you. Remember his love for you. As God trusts you, trust God in return. Let us now proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together let us seek the Lord as we offer our petition and take refuge in the Lord's loving kindness. That the ministers of the church will taste God's goodness in their service to God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That international organizations will taste the Lord's goodness in their efforts for peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor will taste the Lord's goodness in our generous works of charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that we who worship in sincerity of heart will taste the Lord's goodness on our journey to God's dwelling place. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will taste the Lord's goodness in the gift of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with the Pope for small and medium businesses that during economic and social crises, they may find ways to continue operating and serving their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, your Son leads us on the way of love. Draw us to him in the Eucharist, so that we may rejoice with him now and live with him in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. This will be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and Lord himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source of all that is good and holy in the world. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, with Buti Tlachale, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy really that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. 
The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace giving God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.